Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Finishing up our October 80s flashback, we are once again visiting the Princess of Power. Slightly different golden book this time. It's not a super adventure book. It says it's a golden book. It's not the size of a golden book though. It's rather a full magazine size in terms of dimensions and it is hardcover. This is Princess of Power, Everything But Happiness. I've been dying to hear this one. I mean, that cover's been haunting me. It's been sitting out while we get around to recording it. The inside cover does not actually list author or illustrator. There is a name on the side, and it's Nor Quinn Holloway. Author, illustrator, publisher, no clue. Have you tried the back of the book? Yep. As in the last page? Yep. Oz Bobkins. Quite. Once upon a time, on the faraway world of Eternia, twins were born to the king and queen. But soon after their birth, the little brother and sister were separated by fate. The boy, Prince Adam, grew up on the planet Eternia. There, he learned the secrets of Castle Greyskull and that he had a great destiny. Through a magical transformation, he became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, and he fought on the side of goodness. His sister, Princess Adora, was kidnapped as a baby by the wicked Hordak. She was raised by him on the planet Etheria, a world that lived in misery under the rule of Hordak and his horde. Only after many years were Prince Adam and Princess Adora reunited. Like Prince Adam, Adora was given a magical weapon. Hers was called the Sword of Protection. Adora's Sword of Protection gave her mighty powers. With it, she was transformed into She-Ra, the Princess of Power. Her beautiful horse spirit became Swift Wind, a flying unicorn. Adora stayed on Etheria to work on the side of the Rebellion, which was determined to return freedom to the land. This small but dedicated band was led by Angela, Queen of the Kingdom of Bright Moon. Adora guarded the secret of She-Ra carefully. Of her many friends, only the centuries-old Madame Raz and little Cowl knew who She-Ra the Princess of Power, really was. One other possessed the secret of Shira. High atop a mountain was the Crystal Castle, a shining place that was Shira's special place. At the bottom of a mysterious pool in the castle dwelled the spirit of Light Hope, Shira's powerful friend. No one but Shira could see this wonderful castle, and only on the day that all Etheria was free would Light Hope's secrets be known to all. It was for that day, when goodness would reign again over Etheria, that She-Ra pledged her power. Okay, I think Cal's finally in the right color scheme, but I don't remember She-Ra's headpiece being shaped like that. No, no, I remember this being both my favorite and the most off-model. Yeah, and it looks like She-Ra's the only one that's off-model here, at least from what I can see of Glimmer. Yes, at least in this shot, Glimmer and Catra both look reasonable. But yeah, when you get your main character off model, you're starting off with a problem. Well, maybe the model changed over time depending on when this book was released. Though I haven't seen all of She-Ra, so I don't know. She shook her head, ladies and gentlemen. Her headpiece never looked like that, but it still looks better than the one on my hand mirror. That's good. This one also looks like it could turn into a mask. Mm-hmm. It's like they took Catra's and made a good guy version. Yeah. Though Catra's did originally belong to the forces of good. Hmm. Oh, hey, look! It's the author and the illustrator's names. Well, I'll be blown down. <laughs> so, here we go. Now, for real. Princess of Power, Everything But Happiness. Written by Bryce Knorr. Illustrated by Harry J. Quinn and James Holloway. Creative Direction by Jacqueline A. Lloyd. Design Direction by Ralph E. Eckerstrom. we we'll have to take a picture of that for later so I get those things spelled correctly. Yes, yeah, so well, that explains on the outside cover, Nor Quinn Holloway. Oh, it's three different names. Mm-hmm. Written by Nor, illustrated by Quinn and Holloway. And you can see right here how similar they made Catra's and Shira's masks. 
Also, you may hear a kitty in the background purring. Oh look, the hero is ice skating. And I'm guessing those two over there are the queen and Frosta. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whee! Glimmer said. She skated to a shaky stop. Thanks for inviting us, Frosta. Winter is so much fun. Winter? Frosta, the Ice Empress, laughed. This is summer in the Kingdom of Snows. But we know Bright Moon is warmer. That's why we made this special skating rink for all of you. You can skate and keep warm at the same time. As I said before, they're skating and they're in like usual poses and poor Cal is barely standing up. Though even though it says a shaky stop for Glimmer, she looks to be pretty gracefully moving along. And of course, Shira is like doing a classic pose that you would see during some Olympic ice skating. Yes, the question is, why is Shira the princess of power using her transform time to go skating? Yeah. Adora skated a graceful figure eight on the ice. Really? Oh, what now? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's uh, Shira there. Uh, they don't say her name on the first page. They're saying it on this page. That is clearly She-Ra, but they clearly said Adora. How do you do it, Frosta? She asked. Those hot springs look very warm. Why doesn't the ice melt? It's Frosta's magic, Cal said. He skated by backwards. That's why she can live here. She has power over the cold. Cal is right, Frosta said. I make the cold do what I want. Okay, he's skating backwards behind her, but it sounds like he's doing it gracefully, but in the previous shot, he looked unsteady. Also, it looks very much like he's skating forward in this image. And the next image, I think, may actually be him talking about that and supposedly skating backwards. There is a legend, Cal said. Long ago, Etheria's greatest wizard was named Indor. Then Cal told them a poem. When winter ice is warm, or summer freezes cold, you know Indor's magic has you in its hold. Indor, as in the moon? Cal didn't see a hole in the ice. He skated right over a blast of hot steam. Into the air he flew. I like steam baths, Cal said, but that is too much steam. A worried look lined Frosta's face. I'm sorry, Cal, she said. Something is wrong. I can't keep the ice cold. Adora felt danger. Frosta needs Shira's help, she thought. Cal is all wet, Adora said. I'll get him a towel. Adora made sure she was out of sight. The bloody heck! I know, right? Also, the illustration's been very nice so far. They're off-model for Shira, but everyone else seems to be spot-on. Especially Cal. He is so off-color in all the other books, but he's dead-on pretty much in this one. Mm-hmm. Well, I have to say, honestly, that Adora is the most off-model because they drew her as Shira. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think they do the difference between the two because the mask is either up or down. <laughs> Because look at the previous shots, the mask is up, and they call her Adora, but then the mask is down, and now she's Shira. <laughs> what is this, Clark Kent syndrome? I don't know. Okay, uh, for the text, by the honor of Grayskull, she said, I am Shira. Yes, that was in all caps. And, like I said, the illustrations are nice, but they're off model for her. They're slightly stiff on this image over here with her holding up the sword. But so far, it's much more colorful than the other books. Well, it's also hardcover. This one probably cost three times as much when it was published. Shira, Queen Angela cried when she saw the Princess of Power. I am glad you are here. We need your power. The Queen told Shira what had happened. That's why we came on this visit, Angela continued. Frosta told me that strange things were happening. Look, Glimmer said. Frosta is turning blue. It's so cold, Frosta said. Why do I feel so cold? Shira touched Frosta. A golden glow covered them both. You are not sick, Shira said. Someone is taking your magic power. I have questions for this story. <laughs> many, many questions. I just can't think of them right now. It just feels off, and I, I know it's for kids, but something about it just feels... Off. I think it's like the pacing of the words and how the story's going. 
also the illustration of Angela mm -hmm. seems off in the face here. It's like they made her face too wide. But she looks closer to the illustration we saw in the first book. And as we said before, Sherry is the only one who's off model. It's just so weird. Yeah, for your title character to be that far off model. And we're not talking a simple color switch like poor Swiftwind. We're talking all sorts of wrong. You know, we should look at the publishing date on this book to see when it was published and see if it was actually released before the series started. Okay, we just looked it up. This book and this series were released at the same time. We don't know the month difference, but I have a feeling this book was released first and this is the first model of she they had. Or since they were released at the same time and the book was going based off of concept art compared to the TV series which went with final art. Which would explain the She-Ra design difference, but really that subtle of a difference between Adora and She-Ra, mask up, mask down. They were probably still playing with the concept of how they wanted her to work. And now back to the story. Unless you want to talk about that image first, since there's no text on it. Apparently Frost is healed now, and Cal is still soaking wet, and she was going to use her cape to dry him off. No, no, see how the mask is? That's not She-Ra, that's Adora. Fair point. The blue left Frosta's face. You'll feel better now, Shira said, but I must go. I'll return if you need me. I'm all right, Frosta told the others. Look, the hole in the ice is frozen again. Adora came back with a towel. Cal can't blame the ice now if he falls, she joked. There you are, Cal said with a wink. Only he and Madame Raz knew that Adora was Shira. I thought you would never get here. Cal flew into the air to dry off. The water dripped on his friends, not the towel. Oh, Cowl, Frosta laughed. You make me forget my problems. But I wonder, what is wrong with me? Your power comes from magic, Adora said. Maybe magic is the thing taking it away. Also, why does the golden Shira healer's glow, able to restore magic, also diagnose the fact that Frosta's not actually sick? He's flying into the air and they're using motion. Well, a combination of motion lines and duplicate images to indicate that he is flapping his arms slash wings. That's just his ears? Or I always thought it was his ears and wings. That, that those large things. So this could be also be the differences between the concept art and the actual show again, too. And, of course, everyone's getting splashed in the image. Well illustrated. You are right, Adora, Angela said. We need Castaspella. You and Glimmer go to Mysticor. Bring back Castaspella right away. Castaspella? This was the 80s. Castaspella. Cast a spell. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Glimmer flashed about on a beam of light. She was excited by adventure. Don't use up all your light power, Angela warned. You have a long trip. Adora and Glimmer rode as fast as they could. Soon they came to a fork in the road. Let's try a shortcut, Glimmer said. Adora agreed, but soon she was sorry. They were lost in a blinding snowstorm. Through the falling flakes, Adora and Glimmer saw something. They could not believe it. It looked like a deer, Glimmer said. A deer with golden horns. Interesting. And they illustrate the fork on the road and the deer on two separate pages. A nice image above the text and on the other page is the image with the deer. Very well illustrated. Proportions are correct. The uh, pose is a bit awkward. I'm thinking the reference was in mid leap, so. The horses look very good. Though Shira's mask, I'm going to call it a mask at this point, looks a little weird from the back. Tiny bit, and usual nitpick for horse illustrations. So, Glimmer's horse seems to have a full bridle, but no reins. And Spirit has reins, but no bridle. I saw it too, Adora said. Could it be real? Glimmer chased the deer and Adora followed. Suddenly, they were in a beautiful forest. The snow was gone. Instead, a warm sun shone. I have never seen a place like this, Glimmer said. Neither have I, Adora agreed. But something feels wrong. Those silver birds in the trees, they are... The birds flew to the ground. They changed into soldiers. The princesses were trapped. Touch your staff, Adora cried. Get away! But Glimmer had used all the power in her magic staff. 
You can't get away, a guard said. No one leaves the land of Endor, and you won't need your staff and your sword. What's really interesting about the first illustration where they're chasing down the stag is it actually looks like a guy riding the front horse. Yes, Glimmer looks more like a guy there. It almost looks like the person's wearing a hood instead of her hair, and those birds look evil, though I don't think there actually are. They may be attacking them, but that doesn't mean they're evil. Also, oh. I like the costumes. Yeah, I do like the designs of the soldiers' costumes. Also, oh look, there's Spirit's Bridal. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's in that one, too. Mm-hmm. Also, there are Glimmer's Reigns. Ah, inconsistencies. All the posing is very nice. And as I said before, I do like the designs. Though that one feels more like a wolf man than a bird man. The others definitely have a very bird man feel to him. Well, he's furthest in the background, so he's a little blurrier. Also, I think these are watercolor painted. At least the trees are. They have that kind of texture to them, like they were smeared with a little bit of water. The guards took them to a silvery castle. Inside a great hall, they met Indor, the master of the castle. Forgive my guards, he said. I have few visitors. How did you get here? Adora told him what had happened. We must leave now, she said. May we have our horses and our sword and wand back? Oh, don't think of that now, Indor said. You have plenty of time. First, you must meet my daughter. This is Astral. Something seems fishy about this setup, and I have a feeling the daughter over there is very important. But, going on to the illustrations, that guy's face looks a little off down there. And I do like the touch how the birds form the top of the helmets. Adora and Glimmer met a lovely but shy looking girl. Astral looked at both of them very closely. You're both so lovely. You look like princesses, Astral said. And you're real? I hope so, Adora said. Why do you ask? Indor stepped between them. You can talk later, he said. Now you need clothes. Uh, what? Um, uh, they're, they're fully clothed. In theory. I, uh, they're clothed for the time, and Astral's very nicely drawn. She's a very pretty girl. Mm -hmm. So, has anything clicked for you yet? The, the book told us early on. What's the name of the girl's father? Andor. Uh-huh. What was mentioned in Cal's poem? Who was Etheria's greatest wizard of all time? Eh, interesting. Also, sorry everybody, I was kind of baiting looks there instead of letting the story unfold. Indor clapped his hands. Beautiful dresses appeared. Of course, you will need jewelry, too, he said. In an instant, he had produced wonderful necklaces and rings. Enjoy these gifts, Indor said. I want you to have a very pleasant visit. Adora and Glimmer shared a beautiful room. I never saw anything like this on Etheria, Adora said. And Indor certainly is generous. But I thought he was only a legend. That's what everyone says, Glimmer said. According to the story, one day he disappeared. He and his wife and daughter were never seen again. I wonder if we will ever see our friends again. Of course we will, Adora said. I hope. Interesting. I have some theories, but I'll talk about those theories after I talk about the lovely art. And I'm trying to guess who gets what dress, but I'm going to say that the green dress goes to Glimmer and the yellow dress goes to Adora. And now the theory. Two ideas. One, the girl is casting magic, and that's why she asked, is everything real? Or two, he's casting it, and she's always been there for a while to the point where she's questioning whether or not something's real or not. Indor gave Adora and Glimmer more presents, but he would not let them leave. Astral needs friends to play with, he said. Please stay a little longer. We have no choice, Adora said angrily. How can we leave when your guards follow us wherever we go? That's for your own good, Indor snapped back. Now, please, go and play with my daughter. Adora and Glimmer liked Astral very much. They told her many stories. Astral liked the stories about She-Ra best. Soon she was playing She-Ra all over the castle. <laughs> and it's a nice illustration of Adora and Glimmer looking around a corner, seeing 
Astral pretending to be Shiro. They wouldn't sort. Mm-hmm. Also, once again, nice illustration. The faces are actually very well done in this particular image. Mm-hmm. And in case anyone's wondering, Glimmer and Adora are not wearing the dresses Endor provided them. They're still in their default clothes. Of course, it's just easier to draw. Mm -hmm. Shira must be very beautiful, Astral said. I wish I could grow up to be beautiful. You will, Adora said. You will be a beautiful woman before you know it. Astral began to cry. No, I won't, she said. I will never grow up. Endor's daughter ran away. She came back later, but she would not tell Adora and Glimmer what was wrong. What is the matter? Adora asked. We can't help unless you tell us. But Astral would not tell them why she was unhappy. I have a couple of guesses. I don't know if I'm going to need all of them, but my first guess will be she's either a, an illusion or she literally can't age because of her father's magic. And another nicely illustrated image that seems redundant, but I'll move on of Astral running off, and Glimmer and Adora both looking very concerned. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking the person who colored this uses watercolors. Adora watched Astral playing Shira. She got an idea. Here is how we can escape, she told Glimmer. Astral pretends she is Shira. Why don't we pretend we are guards? But we would need uniforms, Glimmer said. So they decided to ask Astral for help one last time. Won't you get us two guard uniforms? Adora asked Astral. If we could go home, maybe we could bring Shira here to see you. Well, Astral said, my father and I will be alone. You will come back to see us, won't you? We will do our best, Adora answered. We want to help your father. He is a very powerful man, but he does not seem happy. The uniforms are hanging out on... A laundry thing. Why didn't they grab them themselves? Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure all the guards would know each other. Aren't they going to recognize them? You know, the helmets don't have face helms. And her mask keeps changing shape slightly. Mm-hmm. Though her face seems a little off in here. I think it's the thickness of the lines they used for her lips. I think the horse is going to give it away. <laughs> Just maybe. I will help you, Astral said. You are my friends. Astral found the smallest guard uniform she could. They just fit Adora and Glimmer. No one stopped them when Astral took them to the stables. They found their horses, the sort of protection, and Glimmer's wand. Goodbye, Adora said. We will come back and bring Shira with us. Adora and Glimmer rode hard to get away from Indor's castle. They raced through the front gate and were back in the cold kingdom of snows. Look, back there, Adora said, where the castle was. It's a patch of falling snow. Adora rode Spirit into the snow. She was back at Endor's castle. The snow patch was the portal to Endor's land. And Endor's guards were headed right toward her. And the first illustration here is them riding through the portal. Though Glimmer's face looks a little bit off in that one. And I'm amazed at how tight-fitting these suits are. I mean, it's like they just put the feather stuff on their usual outfits and painted it silver. Mm -hmm. And then we have a nice illustration of, uh-oh, guards. Also, I'm guessing what's on the next page is, time for Shira. Also, that's not what the sort of protection looks like. Yeah, nope. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the art in this book is based on the concept art for the series compared to what actually was actually used for the TV series. Mm-hmm. As I said, out of all of them, this is the one that's kind of most off-model. Adora remembered Cal's poem. When winter ice is warm or summer freezes cold, you know Indoor's magic has you in its hold. This really must be the Indoor of legend, Adora thought. But where is his wife? She rode back to Glimmer. Get away from here quickly, Adora said. I'll meet you back at Castle Brightmoon. Please go. I don't have time to explain. Glimmer was full of questions, but she did what her friend asked. When Glimmer was gone, Adora raised her sword of protection. By the honor of Grayskull, she said, I am Shira. And transformation. And the horse is still pink. Told you that was consistent throughout all of them. This one we could forgive because it looks like it is based on concept art, but hey, the, the story seems a little disjointed. Not that I'm not enjoying it, though. I said I remember this being my favorite of them. 
Indoor's surprised guards saw Shira racing towards them. They blocked the road. Swiftwind flew into the air. She landed at the castle. You won't get past this, Indor said. Lightning flashed from his fingers. Shira's sword of protection stopped the bolts. No, father, Astral yelled. This is Shira. She has come to be my friend. Indor folded his arms. Shira put away her sword of protection. It is an honor to meet you, Indor, Shira said. You are a legend, but why do you fight me? Why do you take Frost's power? You are powerful also, Shira, Endor said. You have discovered my secret. A tear fell from his eye. Uh, also, the mask looks the best when she's actually, like, wearing it. Mm-hmm. Because she actually looks kind of cool in that bottom image right there. The castle shook slightly. I have no choice, Endor explained. I must take Frosta's power. Once I was happy, he said. I had a beautiful wife and daughter. I had everything I wanted. But my wife became sick. I knew she would die. So I cast a spell. Endor waved his hands. They went deep inside his castle. Before them lay a beautiful sleeping woman. She is my wife, he said. I had to save her. So I stopped time. I hoped one day to make her better but I could not. I tried to give Astral everything. What you see here is not real. My magic made it all. But each year, I need more power to keep the spell alive. Another nice illustration of Shira. It's very well done. Like we said, it's like off model, but who knows? Like we hypothesized earlier, this may be running off of the concept art. Mm -hmm. Everything's very nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's all done in watercolor, which is really nice watercolor. It took me a while to really def definitively go, yeah, that's watercolor. Also, stopping time, kind of figured. Also, interesting, though, if this is all based on concept art, that the introductory story mentioned Light Hope in the Hidden Castle, because I seem to remember that being at least partway into the series. But who knows when they actually decided to introduce it. Yeah, also remember, whenever they do a series, they write a story Bible, and all the main concepts they ever want to introduce are written in that Bible. And most of them were probably grabbed for the introduction. Because apparently we needed an introduction, because at this point we didn't know She-Ra. Though there are apparently several other books in this version of the series. So you took Frost's power, She-Ra said. Endor nodded. Maybe I can help you. She touched Indor's wife. Both were filled with the golden glow. I, I cannot do it, Shira said sadly. She fell back. I have failed. But the woman began to move. Look, shouted Astral. Shira's healing power had worked. Thank you for that unneeded tension. That lasted for less than a sentence because we have I have failed at the end of this page and but the woman began to move at the top of the next page. You were trying to do tension there... Maybe you should have, like, introduced her right from the start, had she reheal her a couple pages ago, and then come back here and have, like, her walk out of the room or something. Thank you for saving my wife, Endor said, but I cannot repay your kindness. I still need Frosta's power. But why? Shira asked. You don't need this magic castle anymore. Yes, we do, Endor said. We are trapped in an island of time. Um... Is there a horse named Morgan here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no Morgan. And wouldn't that be Morgan the Unicorn? I stopped time a thousand years ago, Endor said. If we left our island of time, we would become a thousand years old. But you are a legend, Shira said. Can't you go to the land of legends? No, Endor said. Not even I am that strong. But Shira has great power, Astral said. Maybe she can help. My sword of protection is strong, Shira said. The power of two worlds flows through it. The power is yours. Ah, I get it. I get it now. I get it. I got it. Maybe there is a spell, Endor said. Wow, it's like all the budget went to these last pages. Because the art was good and now it's really good. Mm-hmm. Endor began to whisper. His family held their hands together. Place your sword of protection on our hands, Shira, Endor said, and wish us good luck. That looks opposite of what he just said? Yes. The, the sword is at the bottom 
of the stack of hands. The castle began to fade. It's working, Endor shouted. You must leave, Shira. Hurry, or you will be trapped in the land of legends. Goodbye, Shira, Astral said. Thank you for making us a family again. I will never forget you. Shira ran from the castle. She hopped on swift wind. Everything around them swirled as time came unstuck. Swift wind took off. Suddenly, Shira was in a snow-covered field. All was quiet. We made it, Swift Wind, she said. This illustration is not as good as the previous ones. It's kind of interesting because some of the colors bleeding and the lines aren't as defined, but it's still very pretty. It's got this very swirling aesthetic to it to illustrate the transformation and things being sucked into another universe. And that could be the reason for the lines and the colors being the way they are. She's transitioning between two worlds. At Castle Bright Moon, Adora told Glimmer everything. Well, almost everything. And Shira's power helped them get to the Land of Legends, Adora told her friend. Indoor's castle surely was nice, Glimmer sighed. He had so much. It was like a dream. But even a beautiful dream can be a nightmare, Adora said. You can't buy love or friends. Indoor had everything but happiness. Angela came into her daughter's room. It was a mess. Glimmer, she said, please clean up this room right away. We sure could use Indoor's magic now, Glimmer said. I'll help you, Adora said. The only magic that gets rid of chores is doing them. The end. I'm thinking that's supposed to be a nightgown hanging on the edge of the bed there. A nightgown or robe. Also, this looks very much like a children's room because that looks like a stuffed animal. Those kind of look like those fun tubes that you take in the pool. That's definitely a teddy bear on her bed. Yeah, but I've known many people to still have stuffed animals. Yes, yes, I know. But they're not on my bed. <laughs> I wasn't quite referring to you, but yes. I have stuffed animals, too. They're very lovely. Also, you're running the rebellion, and you're worried that your daughter's room is dirty. Yeah. I guess I think this is heavily in the concept of the series compared to the actual series that went on later. And why is Catra even here? She's in a picture at the very beginning, hiding in the background, and there's a picture of just her face opposite... Shira's face at the very end, but she's not even a foil for the problem like she was in the Crooked Crown. Maybe this was another thing in the concept that she was supposed to be Shira's opposite? Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, what did you like? <laughs> uh, the guard uniforms, the magic, the fact that it was mostly on color. I should have said, what do you remember? Most of it. That's just interesting. This has to be, like, from the concept art of the show. And concept bits of the story bible. I mean, even the logo is different compared to the other books. Mm-hmm. And the whole front page that Once Upon a Time is basically a summary of the series. I mean, this is pretty much what you get in the opening title sequence. Except for the part about Light Hope because that was an actual episode but Adora being She-Ra and only certain people knowing her true secret that's all the title sequence. So was it nice to look back on? Mm-hmm. Though so looking at the order of the books listed on the back cover I'm like are these listed in order because if that's the case this would be the third out of four. Interesting. Because this first one sounds like it could be the secret of the sword all over again. She-Ra Princess of Power. With he mans help, Princess Adora discovers her real family and learns the secrets of She-Ra. Can she and he man stop Hordak's plot to crush the Rebellion once and for all? Yeah. That sounds a lot like the secret of the sword. And I betcha she has the same outfit in that one. Probably. And then the Queen of the Ball. Queen Angela announces a wonderful ball at Castle Brightmoon. Catra wants to spoil the party. Can She-Ra stop her? And who will capture the handsome visiting prince? Hmm. That sounds a little bit like the Crooked Crown. There's something going on at the castle. Catra interferes. Then everything but happiness, which we just read. When Frosta begins to lose her power, Adora and Glimmer discover a fantasy castle. How will they escape its world of magic? Only She-Ra can help. 
She solves the mystery of a long-lost wizard and helps a little girl. And then the last listed on this back cover, the spirit of She-Ra. Funny. The horse. Hordak takes Adora's horse and sets a trap that She-Ra must stop. She-Ra looks to her animal friends for help. Can she save Spirit and help a cowardly wolf get back his courage? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Which just makes me think of the cowardly dragon from She-Ra. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Where was the title page hiding? Yes, after the introduction page. So this has been Princess of Power, Everything But Happiness. Written by Bryce Knorr. Illustrated by Harry J. Quinn and James Holloway. Creative Direction by Jacqueline A. Lloyd. Design Direction by Ralph E. Eckerstorm. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, there are several other she books. We did a whole month's worth. Already checked out all the she books? There are other books. Checked out all of those? Wow, you've been busy. How about checking out some stuff on the main channel? Bet you haven't gotten through all of that. I'm sorry for my older stuff. <sighs> Enjoyed this book and would like to track down a copy for yourself? Please check below. If we can find it in print, we will try to provide an Amazon link. Just feel like shopping or picking up something else she re themed? Cosplay outfits, the series, the pilot, a stuffed figure with Swift Wind, some action figures. Check out Amazon and go shopping. Just want to go shopping in general? Try the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably already shop at anyways. Get a welcome bonus when you sign up and make a qualifying purchase. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you for listening. Riveting. Yeah, had my attention all the way through. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to say something after someone sneezes? <laughs> Don't do it again. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we get to the book now? <laughs> Bless you. I was busy laughing. Come on. <laughs>